Yo, what's going on guys? You're watching JavaScript for Beginners Lesson 22 and in this video we're going to start working with numbers. Okay then, so working with numbers in JavaScript is pretty easy. If you want to store a number in a variable, all you need to do is write the var keyword, my variable name, and set that equal to whatever number you want, okay? That's all there is to it. Now, in other programming languages, we'd have to specify what type of number we want. For example, an integer or a float. In JavaScript, we do none of that. If you want a whole number, you write a whole number. If you want a decimal number, you write a decimal number. That's all there is to it. The most important thing to remember is that you don't surround your numbers with quotation marks like this. Because that there, my friends, turns that number into a string. This is no longer a number, but a string. And this is important because when you try to add two numbers together, it introduces the whole concept of concatenation. Now, we've seen concatenation briefly in one of my earlier tutorials, but I'm just going to quickly go over it again and show you a few examples. So to do that, I'm going to make two variables. Variable A, and I'm going to set that equal to 5. Variable B, I'm going to set that equal to 5 there as well. Now, the first thing I'm going to do is just add these numbers together and log it to the console. So console.log A plus B, right? And 5 plus 5, that should be 10, okay? Let's refresh. Perfect, we get 10. Now, if one of these was a string, let's do the same sum and save that. This time, we get 55. Now, two things is going on here. The first thing that's going on is concatenation. That is, it's squashing the two things together. It's not adding them, 5 plus 5. It's putting them side by side. So if this was, say, 7, it's taking 7 and putting 5 next to it. And I'll refresh to show you. 75 this time. The second thing that's happening is it's taking that number, that result, and it's turning that into a string. This right here is no longer a number. And I can tell that because it's black in the console and not blue. Before, when I did two numbers, pay attention to this, currently black, I'll refresh. Now it's blue. You might not be able to see that on the screen, so I'm gonna show you another way. Turn this back into a string, and then underneath here, I'm gonna write console.log, and I'm gonna say type of A plus B, and then what this is going to do is give me the data type of the result of this. Okay, now let's save it and refresh. And you can see that I'm getting a string data type. So that's telling me that this result here is no longer a number, it's a string. So this is really important. Okay, you need to make sure that when you're declaring numbers, you don't have quotation marks around them. Right. So this thing here, by the way, you don't need to know now. I'll go through type of later when we've covered all the different data types. I was just showing you what the result was. Now, another useful feature that JavaScript provides us with when we're working with numbers is the math object. And I know we've not talked about objects in general yet. We're going to do that later. But I wanted to introduce this now because it's really simple and very useful. Now, they've given this object in um, JavaScript so that we can work out different calculations easier. Okay, now all I have to do is write the math keyword and then I can do dot and then I can call any of the math functions or constants that I want. So for example, I could say math.round and pass this in 7.5 and that is going to round the number 7.5 upwards to 8. If it was 7.3, it would round it down to 7, 7.8, up to 8, etc. And I'll just console.log this for you to see. Let's do that there. Save it. And you can see we're getting 8 because we're rounding this up to 8. Another method or function that we have on the math object is floor. And this is similar to round, but floor says, okay, whatever the number, even if it's 7.9, round it downwards to the 7. Don't round it upwards. So let's refresh. And this time we get 7. Opposite of this is seal, which stands for ceiling. And this rounds us up no matter what the number. So let's refresh. And there we go, 8. Um, another one we have is max, where we can pass in multiple values. So we'll pass in 7. Four, uh, 4, 9, and 8. Now, it's going to give us back the maximum number. So let's save that. 
and refresh, which is nine, yeah. And the point here is that we may not know which numbers are being passed in. These may all be kind of random numbers or numbers entered by a user, and we want to sort these, okay? So it's not always this simple, but the feature is there for you to use. Uh, it also holds constants like pi, and I can save that, and it's gonna log out pi for me. There we go. And uh, it has various other functions and constants as well. If you want to research that, go out there and Google it. Um, there's loads of websites which are going to tell you all the different functions and constants of the math object. So that's about it for this numbers lesson. What we are going to do in the next lesson is talk about NAN, which stands for not a number. We've seen it briefly so far, but I just want to go into more detail about that and how we can use it to check variables out. So... If you've enjoyed this video, please like, share or subscribe. Otherwise, I'll see you guys in the next one.